Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about how I tested for Staff Sergeant or E5 in the Air Force. So I have been in since December 2018, which is about two and a half years. So this was my first time testing. I'm gonna go over a little bit about the process since for me it was a little bit confusing and I did get quite a few questions in my Instagram DMs about how I studied, what resources I used or what apps I used or things like that. So hopefully this is going to be helpful for those of you out there testing for Staff Sergeant soon. Let's just jump right into how all of this works. Okay, so on April 13th, I was notified by my CSS that I would be testing and that is when they will have you come down to the CSS office and basically sign your paperwork saying, yes, I'm going to test and this is my date and this is my time and this is the location. And so you sign their copy, they give you a copy of yours. So I took my test on May 21st. So them telling me on April 13th gave me about five weeks to fully prepare and know exactly when my test was going to be. But prior to April 13th, I already knew I was going to test. It's not like you just find out five weeks before, but that's when I personally started really studying and really focusing on what I personally needed to know in order to pass this test. So not only is the test very important for your promotion points, but your EPR is also very important. So this was, of course, my first EPR, and there is a scale to it, so you can get like a one, two, three, four, or five. One is the lowest, five is the highest. So five is going to be promote now, like your supervisor is saying this person needs to be promoted this cycle right now, and you have a very high chance of getting it at that point. For me personally, I got a three on my first EPR, which is a promote. So if you get a one or two on your first EPR, which basically is just evaluating your performance, then a one or two is going to prevent you from taking the tests. If you get a one or two, it's basically saying this person is not ready to test, they're not ready to promote, and they're not ready to take on more responsibility. So I got a three, which is 200 points. And obviously the higher score you get on your EPR, the more points you're going to get. So your test is a mandatory appointment. It's just like any other military appointment. You can't be late, you have to show up. It's just very important to, I wouldn't even say to be on time, but to be early. It's probably gonna be at the education center on your base, so that's where mine was. So the PKE is 100 questions. It's all multiple choice, you are timed, it's an hour and 45 minutes. I believe you have to get 45 of the 100 questions correct in order to pass. And then obviously you want to get as high of a score as you can to be competitive with everybody else taking that test. There were nine people in my testing room. I don't know if that's normal or if that's a COVID thing, but we did have to wear face masks the whole time. Unless we were fully vaccinated, then it was our choice to take the mask off. There were three females, including myself, and six males. And it's not just your career field that you're testing with. So there were all kinds of different AFSCs in the room. There was a civilian in there giving us instructions and timing us and being like the, what's the word? The proctor. For example, if I got 75 questions correct, then for my job, they would double it. So that would be 150 points included with my 200 point EPR. So that would be like a total of 350 points for me. That's just one example. So there are a few other things that are worth points, like promotion statements, decorations, things like that. They're not worth very much, so I'm not gonna get into all the little extra points you can get, but personally, I would focus on a very strong EPR and a very high test score. Unfortunately, I have to wait until August 18th to find out how I did on the test, and so that's about a three month waiting period, so I will not know until August, September, if I even made Staff Sergeant, but Hopefully going over the whole process will be helpful anyways. So the PKE is a time test. We were given an hour and 45 minutes to complete it. We were not allowed to have any food or drink at our actual desks, but there was a table off to the side where you could put like any energy drinks or water bottles or any electronics or things like that. So there was like a bucket with our phones in it, like the desks are spaced out and it's a Scantron, like you're back in high school. I have not done one of those in so many years. But honestly, when we first got in there, the part that took so long, 
like 30, 40 minutes was everybody getting in, putting their stuff to the side, sitting down, making sure we all had two pencils, and she had to pass out all the documents. She called all of us up there individually to look at our military ID, and she went over all the instructions and how to fill out the top of the answer sheet where it has like your name, your social, your birthday, your test booklet, all these things. So that whole process took like 30 or 40 minutes, which by that time I was like, I already have to go to the bathroom again because you cannot leave during the test to go to the bathroom. So I was like, I hope that when she's done going over this 30, 40 minute ordeal that we have time to go to the bathroom again. I'm four months pregnant, so I was a little bit worried about having to leave during the test to go to the bathroom, but I knew that I couldn't. So yes, as soon as she was done with the instructions and we were done filling out the initial part of the answer booklet, she was like, if you guys have to leave the room for any reason to use the restroom or anything, do it right now. This is your last chance. And I was like, I really don't want to be that person that gets up and makes everyone wait. But someone else got up, I got up, two other people got up, and I was like, yes, okay. So we're good. So I got to use the restroom right before the test. It did not take me the full hour and 45 minutes to do the test. I think it took me maybe an hour. I think it took me about 60 minutes. Um, every 30 minutes she was telling us that it had been 30 minutes and I was surprised how far along I was 30 minutes in. I was like, okay, I need to slow down and take my time. Like I'm a fast reader, but that can also be a downfall because you miss details and you just go too quickly. So yeah, after 30 minutes, I was like, I need to slow down, go back, go over everything. So after about an hour, 60 minutes, I was done with 100 questions and I literally went over my answer sheet two times just to make sure that I didn't miss any bubbles because even if you don't know something, like I obviously did not know all of those questions. There were questions I had to guess on, take my best guess. So. Just wanted to make sure I at least filled in something for every single question. Okay, so let's get into how I studied for those five weeks before the test. So fortunately, I did have some time to go over everything at work. I know that not everybody's job allows them to do that. So I was really grateful for the time I did have at work to study. So I did do flashcards, but the first thing I did was I ordered this off of Amazon. It was like $9. You can print out all 270 pages yourself if you really want to. Some people did print it out, but I was like, let me just pay $9 and get this shipped to me. It's already like, you know, I don't have to get a binder or hole punch anything or it's just ready to go, ready to be highlighted. So depending on what kind of learner you are, I tried the audiobooks and I was like, this is not for me. It was very monotone. It was very boring. I could not concentrate. I guess I'm more of like a hands-on visual learner. So for me, I like to see the words, touch the words like with a highlighter. Yeah, that's just how I learn personally. So, so I did just kind of go through the book chapter by chapter with a highlighter and just kind of highlight what I thought would be most important and things I wanted to remember. There is a chart that tells you what's most important to study, like which chapters and which categories. So for Staff Sergeant this cycle, the most important thing according to this chart says uh, Air Force Heritage. So that's kind of like past operations and people who have made sacrifices in the past operations. There's a lot of names and dates and countries and awards and things like that. So uh, it is available on the Air Force portal. This whole thing is just something that you can look up. You don't have to order this off Amazon, you don't have to pay for it. But even though it's 2021, we were tested on the 2019 information. So yeah, everything is in here. A few of the different topics that you study are like leadership, communication, uh, promotion systems, dress and appearance, fitness, military customs and courtesies, and things like that. So there's a ton of information and there's only a hundred questions on the test. You don't know what's going to be on your test. You don't know exactly what to memorize or study or comprehend. You just kind of have to know a little bit about everything. There's no way to know what's going to be on your test. So yeah, that's really all I can say about that. So after I went through this book briefly and just did some highlighting, some skimming, some overall knowledge, 
Then I took it a little bit further and I started to make the note cards. So besides the book and the flashcards, I also used PDG Gold. It is expensive. Um, I will say that it was helpful. And there are many other less expensive options out there. There are free tests online. If you type in like free PDG tests, um, there are definitely less expensive apps and websites. There's some that are like $5, $30. So I don't know anything about them, but I know tons of other people use tons of other resources. So if you guys want to share those in the comments for other people, if you guys have recommendations and have good experiences with other apps and websites, feel free to let us know. But yeah, I used this book, flashcards, and PDG Gold. So the last two weeks leading up to my test, I used PDG Gold a ton. I was doing practice tests like all day. There's 25 question tests, 50 question tests, 100 question tests. There's like something called the knowledge room where you can just pick a chapter and it'll just kind of go through like the highlights of it, the most important parts. Um, so I really, really used the heck out of PDG Gold. Um, I really liked the practice tests. Um, some of the tests, it would tell you instantly if you got that question wrong, which is really nice because it's immediate feedback. And then there's other tests where you'll go through like 50 questions and then it tells you at the very end how you did. So lots of different tools on there. Um, but yeah, there's tons of resources out there to study. So I think that pretty much covers everything. But as always, if you guys have questions about it, just let me know in the comments. Or you can message me on Instagram at Brittany Lynn Lewis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck to everybody testing. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.